To understand bandwidth estimation, let's first understand what available bandwidth is. So I've got here a timeline on the x-axis, and on the y-axis I've got bandwidth. Over time, the available bandwidth in our network can change. It fluctuates based on the local uh, network conditions, as well as what happened between us and the server that is we're communicating with. Things that affect it are congestion in the local network, someone looking at Netflix at the same time that we're trying to communicate, and it can be in the remote network or anywhere in between. Now what we're trying to do is to understand how much available bandwidth we have, because this isn't a number that we can get off the network. So we have this line here, which is our estimation of that bandwidth. Now what we want is for that estimation to be as close as possible to the available bandwidth, because if we make it too low, then we're not going to use the amount of bandwidth that we have, and the quality of our calls will not be as good as it could be. On the other hand, we don't want to overestimate or overshoot the available bandwidth, because then we're going to hit congestion and packet losses, which are detrimental to the quality of our media. In WebRTC, there are two mechanisms for bandwidth estimation. The first one, receiver side. This is called RAMBI, Receiver Estimated Maximum Bitrate. And then there's the sender side one. In WebRTC, that's TWCC, Transport Ride Congestion Control or Transport CC. How does RAMBI works exactly? In this case, the receiver is going to make that decision. The sender will be sending out the time on all the video packets. So we're going to know the time in which these were sent. Based on the differences of these times as they are received, the receiver can decide if or when to increase or decrease the bitrate. Since he's, he is not the one sending, he's going to send over the sender the estimated bitrate that he's seen on the network. Transport Ride CC works in a different way. Here the sender is the one that needs to make that estimation. So the sender will be sending a global sequence number on all RTP packets that are being sent, and he's going to remember the send times based on that sequence number. The receiver will then report back all of the deltas, the differences between the RTP packets that were received, and it will do that reporting based on that global sequence number that the sender sent him. Now the sender has all the information he needs and he's going to use that to decide if and when to increase or decrease bitrate based on the estimation that he will cal calculate on his own. To learn more about WebRTC, you can go to webrtcglossary.com and to my training courses on webrtccourse.com. Thank you.